One Man's Family, brought to you by Fleischmann's Yeast. family is dedicated to the mothers and fathers of the younger generation and to their bewildering offspring. Tonight we present Chapter 8, Book 44, entitled Thanksgiving at the Dairy Ranch. And now before we join the barbers, there's something I promised the Fleischmann people I'd do for them. And that's to say thank you for those millions of more cakes of Fleischmann's fresh yeast you've been buying. Why, all over the country, people seem to be swinging to Fleischmann's yeast for extra vitamins. Well, no wonder, Ken. Don't tests indicate that when people need extra vitamins, many of them can expect benefits from Fleischmann's yeast in just one short week? Well, that's right, Ted. You see, friends, Fleischmann's fresh yeast not only contains the entire natural vitamin B complex, it's the only yeast of any kind that contains added amounts of vitamins A and D. So when you mix it with tomato juice, which contains vitamin C, to make a refreshing vitamin cocktail, you've got every vitamin known to be needed in human nutrition. And say a few ladies sometimes bake at home, here's something else you'll be glad to know. All of the vitamins in Fleischmann's yeast go right into whatever you bake, with no great loss in the oven. So whether it's for baking or for extra vitamins, do as millions of others are now doing and ask for Fleischmann's fresh yeast with the yellow label. Today is that certain day. This is the occasion of the annual trek of the barber clan to the country for the one and only purpose of sinking a fang into a turkey leg or a wing if you happen to be so namby-pamby in your taste as to prefer light to dark meat. Anyway, big and little barbers alike are down at the dairy ranch to do justice to the ancient and honorable custom of passing up the plate for seconds and thirds. They're here not only to eat but to give thanks that not only are we allowed the noble bird for the table this year, but likewise, a bit of cranberry sauce and bread dressing, although uh, I prefer oyster and rice dressing myself. The hosts are jointly Cliff and Irene and Hazel. And just now at 12 noon, Irene and Hazel are up to their elbows in parsley, turkey bastings, mincemeat, hard sauce, and all the other ingredients of the satisfactory Thanksgiving dinner. And woe be he who intrudes in the sacred precincts of the kitchen at this crucial hour. That's why all and sundry have been summoned out in the front yard by Paul from underfoot. <laughs> All right, quiet, everybody. Yeah, quiet. <laughs> Goodness, such a big voice for such a little boy. What do you mean, little? <laughs> Cut to the quick. Now, if I may have your attention, please. Are we all here? Why, yes, sure. Are we all here? Anybody who isn't here, speak up. Oh, like <laughs> You're such a dope, Jack. Does that keep you from being nuts about me? Uh-oh, makes me nuttier than ever. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, are we just going to stand around and listen to Jack and Betty? Yeah, let's do something. First, we've got to have the roll call. Well, that's the first on the list, isn't it, Paul? Well, if we're all present... Oh, well... no, we always have a roll call. <laughs> yeah, sure we do, Uncle Paul. Well, if you insist, quiet for roll call. We'll start at the top of the list. Henry Barber, sire of the clan and noblest barber of them all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Think nothing of it. Fanny Barber, our mother and the power behind the throne. <laughs> <laughs> Mom's with the little children up in the nursery. Doesn't she want to go for a walk? She said not. Hmm. Paul Barber... <clears throat> and mighty glad of it. And that goes for us, too. I should say so. Next, uh, Hazel Barber Herbert. Absent. Hey, what do you mean absent? She's on special Thanksgiving KP duty, up to her knees in rice and oyster dressing. I prefer old-fashioned bread dressing myself. Oh, here you go. Hey, why don't we give three cheers for Mom? In there working to give us a good dinner. Good idea. Six for Hazel. <laughs> rock, rock, rock. Rock, rock, rock. Hazel! 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 Hey, look, that goes for Irene, too. She's in there beating her brains out right alongside of Hazel. All gone right. Six for Irene, everybody. Rock, rock, rock. Rock, rock, rock. Irene! 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 Hey, what's going on out there? Oh, hello, Irene, honey. We're just giving the cooks a big hand. Oh, thanks very much. But you're making the cooks very self-conscious and nervous. Hi, Hazel. You'll have to excuse us now. We've got other things to do besides stand at the kitchen window. How's the turkey coming, Ma? (laughs) We'll find out in good time. Shut the window, Irene. (laughs) Goodbye now. 
Boy, it sure is wonderful to have a lot of good cooks in the family, isn't it? <laughs> Come on, let's get on with the roll call. It's taking all day. Yes, you're quite right, Joan. Uh, next, Clifford Barber. Here. Claudia Barber, Lizzie. Present. And am I glad that I'm out here this year. That's right. Last year you were the hostess. And chief cook and bottle washer. And a mighty good one. Jack and Betty Barber. Here. Here. Hey, that's sort of crowding us, isn't it? Saying our names together. Ah, oh, but I thought you two were one now. What do you mean, one? Was Elizabeth Sharon Ann? We're three. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't think Elizabeth Sharon Ann is a person... Hey, are we going to talk about babies? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Aunt Betty. I didn't mean to interrupt. You're quite right, Pinky. We'll save Elizabeth Sharon Ann for some other occasion. Go on, Paul. Um... Teddy Barber? Present and accounted for. Oh, just who is accounting for you these days, Teddy? <laughs> I am, Cliff, and doing a good job, too. I bet you aren't that. Well, go on, Paul. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Um, who else do we have on our roster? Hey, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Henry, alias Hank Herbert? Present and accounted for. William, alias Pinky Herbert? Here I am. Good. <laughs> Joan Roberts Lacey? I'm present. Hey, here comes Dan Murray. Hey, Dan, come here. For goodness sake, Dan, where you been? You almost got left out of this. Well, I've been putting on my new bib and tucker. Oh, a doggone clothes horse. Well, hardly. But I didn't want to sit down to the Thanksgiving festivity smelling of Her Majesty the Cow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're just in time for roll call. Daniel Murray, first officer of the dairy ranch and handmaiden to our friend the bovine. Present and happy to be in such pleasant company. Ah, as pretty a speech as I've heard in many a day. <laughs> And now that everybody's accounted for, let me say I'm sorry we can't have with us today our other dear ones. Nicky, someplace, we don't know where, in the service of his country. Tracy Baker, when last heard from, flying patrol in Alaska. And Wayne Grubb, a full-fledged lieutenant in the Glider Pilot Command, now stationed at Albuquerque, New Mexico. Let's pause for... Just a moment's silence in their honor. Thank you, Paul. Oh, yes. And now I think everyone understands what's to be done now. We break up into groups of threes or fours and start out over the hills and fields in any direction preferred. The idea is to get a little exercise to whet the appetite. Yes, I'm not going to wear myself out. I want to enjoy my dinner. That's right. Just enough to put an edge on your hunger. What do you mean, put an edge on? I've got an edge on my appetite right now that it shaved the bristles on a pig. You and me, too, Uncle Jack. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you've got any preference for partners... I'd like to go with you, Paul. Well, you bet he. Hey, how about your husband? Oh, I get to spend every day with you. You're no treat on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> a fine thing. Good enough for the girl every day except holidays. Oh, sure, Jack. You don't want to tag your wife everywhere, do you? Why don't you join Cliff and me? All right, doggone it, I will. Just the three of us? Yeah. Come on. See you people at the dinner table. Two o'clock sharp, don't forget. Okay. So we forget that. Uncle Paul. Yes, Pinky? I'd like to walk with you and Aunt Betty, okay? Well, I should say so. I'd like to, too. Is it okay, Betty? I can't think of anything I'd like better, Joan. Well, hey, Hank, you going with Paul and Aunt Betty and Joan and me? Nah, I'm going with Grandpa Barber. Yes, good boy. How about you, Teddy? Well, I'm going with Father Barber, too. Both Dan and I, aren't we? That's right. Mr. Barber, Hank, Teddy, and myself make up our walking party. Oh, good. That takes care of everyone. Well, then can we get started? Without any delay. Now, which way are you people going, Dad? Eh? Well, I- I'll leave that up to Dan. Well, in that case, I think I'll guide you down through the west pasture to the eucalyptus grove. Oh, yes, that's a swell walk. Yes, yes, I- I've been over it, just to my liking. Well, then I suggest our contingent take the path along the creek. Eh? Oh, yes, down through the willows. Does that suit you, Pinky and Joe? Okay, sure, suits me swell. There's no water in the creek, though, just pools. Well, we won't mind that. We're going for exercise, not water. All right. All in, squad. Here we go. Oh, I love this. Doesn't the wimp spark move? Yippee! Come on, dude. I'll race you that old stump. Okay, but you got to give me a head start. All right, now I'm trying to take you. <laughs> oh, great thing, youngsters. Here. Aren't we going to get started? Impatient, Hank? I sure am. Well, come along. We'll head out across the pasture. Uh, there are no cows in the pasture, I think. Nary a cow, Mr. Barber. Yes, I'll hold you to that. If we should happen to see a cow, we'll protect you from it, Father Barber. That's very generous of you, Teddy. <laughs> oh, I don't think Grandfather's really afraid of cows. He's just saying that. Yes. Sure. Who's afraid of a cow? Yes, well, have it your own way. Oh, we have to go through this gate? That's right. Oh, here, you better let me give you a hand, Hank. Yeah, it is kind of heavy. Yeah, it sags. Ah. 
There we are. That'll let us through. Go ahead, Father Barber. Here. We'll just leave it open until we get back. Okay. Teddy, you know something? What's that, Hank? I'm so glad that this is Thanksgiving, I could just about bust wide open. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets that feeling on Thanksgiving. Hey, look. I'll rush you to that tree over there. Oh, do I have to run? Well, Jiminy Christmas. I gotta raise somebody. You just got too much steam up, huh? <laughs> yeah. I can't just walk. Oh, okay. I'll run with you this one. But that's all. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Then get set. Go. <laughs> Come on, Teddy. You have to run faster than that. Pretty Oh, uh, Teddy's a very good companion for children. Yes, grew up with Hazel's boys. Yes, and from what I hear, the same can be said of you. Oh, sure, I like children. Yes. Under those circumstances, it's surprising you're not the father of a large family. Well, first a man must line up the right woman to be their mother. Yes. Good, upstanding lad such as you. Well, thank you, sir. Hmm? It's been almost 20 years since anyone called me a lad. You don't count yourself very, very ancient, do you? Well, I'll be 40 next month. Who you, sir? You're, you're doing a mighty important job down here on the ranch for Hazel, I hear tell. Well, it's a job I contracted to do, so why shouldn't I do it well? And besides, it's a job I know how to do and one I happen to love. Oops. Yeah, yes, yeah, it certainly does. And uh, if we're passing bouquets, I'd like to hand a few to Clifford. There's a laddie who's making a number one farm hand out of a pretty second-rate city boy. Hmm? You think that Clifford has found his strength? He has. And unless something pretty desperate comes along to trip him up, well, you may relax and forget your worries over your second son. Yes, that's good to know. I've been suspecting him. Yes, sir, he's a new man. And uh, may I add that his marriage to him was the most fortunate matrimonial adventure. Most fortunate. You think so? Well, uh, don't you? I do indeed. I like hearing you say so. Yeah, she's the one woman for Clifford, if ever woman was made for man. Uh, uh, Daniel. Yes, sir? Uh, uh, may I say that I'm very sorry about Hazel's attitude. I, I mean, in connection with yourself. Thank you, sir. Well, she's quite right, I dare say. I think she's using the poorest judgment I've ever known her to use. A woman's heart, it says, its own judge. It has standards of its own based on no precedent. No law, or high or low, but its own. Yes, I guess maybe you're right. But I'm very well pleased that you have chosen to remain here at the ranch in close association with her. If you mean perhaps sometime in the future. I mean, exactly. Oh, oh I don't know, sir, but I'd bet against it. Yeah. Are you just being philosophical, or... Or have you lost interest? Lost interest? <laughs> I guess you don't know Daniel Murray. Yeah, good boy. Just buy your time. I think that... Hey, you there? Mm. Grandfather, we found a pheasant's nest. At this time of year? Oh, it's an old nest, but it has two eggs in it. <laughs> Didn't hatch, eh? Teddy's got them. Oh, here she is. Look, two pheasant eggs. They didn't hatch out of last spring setting. Oh, say, now, that's very unusual. Wild birds very seldom have unfertile eggs. Can I hold them, Teddy? Oh, sure, you may have them. You mean it? Sure. Here. Oh, boy, that's keen. Uh, who's that over there by the willows? Where, Father Barber? Oh, that's Paul and Betty's gang. Yeah. They apparently decided to take the path on this side of the creek. The slab will be a little damp down here. Well, I don't imagine the sun gets down in here much this time of year. Uh-huh. But now the leaves are coming off, there ought to be more sun. Joan, well, be careful about stepping off the path. What, what for? I was just walking in the dead leaves. Yes, but the leaves cover rocks and chuck holes. Sure. Step in one of them and see where you'd be. Oh, where? Flat on your face with a twisted ankle. And then how would you enjoy Thanksgiving dinner? Okay. But I bet I wouldn't. Oh, well, there isn't very much water in the creek, is there? Uh-uh. Just in pools. But where do we get a good rain? Yeah, sure. Just one big rain, and then you should see the water come steaming down. Aren't we going to cross back over? Well, let's wait until we get to the bridge, eh? Yes, yeah, just up ahead. Mmm, I like it down here. The way the path twists back and forth across the creek under the willows. Oh, look, he's sitting on this log. A toad. Oh, it must be a dwarf. He's so little. Oh, that's no toad. Sure, it's a toad. 
Look at him. Blink his eyes. Oh, he's cute. He is neither a toad, is he, Uncle Paul? Yeah, I think he is, Pinky. A tree toad. I wonder if he remembers when he was a tadpole. Sure. <laughs> 